Brian here is one of my clients who's been working on his private pilot certificate, also known as your primary. Lately, we have been focusing on his cross-country training, but because of some delays, we're going to go back and work on some of the basics to shake off some rust and improve his skills. So come join Brian and me as we brush up on his skill in Skill Refresher. Skill Refresher is a series with Brian and myself as we brush up on some skills and shake a little bit of rust off on the primary maneuvers. Something to note is I am not Brian's first fly instructor, so he may do some things a little differently than what I normally teach. So be sure to hit that like, subscribe, and bell notification to be alerted when I come out with a CFI tips on how to handle a client who was originally trained by somebody else. This will help kind of let us practice some more on instrument scanning. So, put the plane in slow flight. I'll let you choose a clean or a landing configuration. So what's going to be our target altitude, or target airspeed? 65 is usually what we do with like a landing. Yeah, but that's slow flight. Slow flight is what, listen to the If we can, minimal control. A little bit above that is what the uh, PTS standards say now. Before, that's what we used to do. Um, when I was in training, is that we would just take it to the first stall horn. That way you didn't have to look at your air speed. Okay, so to remind me how to get into slow flight. I was going to do some stalls, but basically we want to. Yeah, we want to. Yeah, usually when we practice stalls, we also it's it slow flight and stall. So RV, pretty much the same procedure of hold the car key, power back 1500, hold your altitude. That's kind of the universal standard for. Uh, or slow it down to uh, for either a stall, slow flight, or it's that's that's how you slow it down. The difference is in what you do when you hit certain target altitudes. In our case, we're going to reapply power and maintain a certain airspeed. It looks like in this case about 45 knots. A little bit about that, but maybe 50 knots. Okay. This we're going to slow down. Yep. 1500, start hitting that trim. This nose up. Yeah, we're gonna hold that airspeed. Alright, we're gonna you wanna add flaps? Good choice. Alright. Start applying power and it's gonna take a lot of power because we're below the power curve. Get those wings level. Start trying to use your rudder a little bit for this. So we don't have to worry about hailing on first. Remember, we're close to that stall speed, so if we have a flap surface go down, it may exceed that angle of attack and we may get a wing drop. That will be very smooth here. Alright, we're climbing a little bit, so what does that tell us? So we're going to add power, reduce power. We're going to reduce that power here a little bit. Just a little bit. We'll go that first and we'll see what it does. If it's not enough, we'll reduce the power a little bit more. Don't forget to look outside. The airplane's slowly turning. Going to the right here. I have my foot on the rudder, that's why. Still climbing. Reduce the power to about 1500 RPM again, our slowdown speed, and maintain your airspeed. We've gained 200 feet, which is well exceeding our, our thing was approaching minus 100, 100 feet goal. goal. We're going to have to do a pretty uh, good descent here now. Don't just keep holding the nose up. See? Nope, don't add power, lower the nose. Because we want to start a descent guard, we don't want to climb. So what we need to do is reduce our power and then reduce our nose to maintain our airspeed. That will cause us to descent. Up on five forward six, final sign right. See? We're getting a yeah, take it, coming in not only that, but a really five super five slow four, descent of four hundred feet per minute. Sectors is final for this one, yes please. Turn on four. Coming in. 
broken, sorry about that. Uh, Avalon 5-4, confirm left turn. Avalon 5-4, heading 240. Left turn 240, Avalon 5-4. Victor, turn 10 degrees right, enemy. All right, now that we got radar up to, what are we going to do? Let's take a little bit. Could you repeat that? Interesting. Up? Why are you reducing three power four at our altitude? Switch a different radio here. Trying to get down a little bit. Victor, 10 right, and then 50 knot range. All right, so we're a little and fast. Three thousand. Just better than the last. Don't. What's uh, happening now, though? Out. Losing altitude. All right, so what do we need to do? Pitch up a little bit here. And? Add a little power here. Add a little power. We use and our power to control, control our altitude, altitude. Our, our climb and descent. And then we use our pitch energies. to control our airspeed. Take it. Yes, uh, Very similar to how, how a lot of times we will make adjustments on our coming into land. All right, now we're below 100 feet of our target altitude. What are we going to need to do? Got to get back up. Yeah. Full power. Because we're a power curve. Yep, absolutely. We need full power. And now, with full power right now, we are not climbing. We're at a completely level. So why is that? Right. No, we can do it with our flaps. Now you just made the situation very complicated. You retracted your flaps, and now all of a sudden we don't know what our stall speed really is. You reduced the drag. What about that car piece that you had out? Push that in. Yeah, push it in. There we go, we got a little more power. There we go, 400 feet per minute. Alright, we're back to... Alright. I want you to make a very gentle turn. Back to the north. What's our new target airspeed since we raised the flaps? The flaps are back up to, I mean, we don't want to go too low, low, low 65. Why 65? Keep fixate on that. What is 65? Now? 65 is my, my landing speed, it's like my approach speed. All right, what else is that? That's not my stall speed, my stall speed is lower than that. That's much more than that. What important number is also 65? Oh, that's what I hit when I go on when I land. That's my. Yep. What's? It's a more important number. If I pull that engine out. What are you going to pitch for? Seventy-two. Best glide. Best glide's uh, roughly about sixty-five. Seventy-two is technically perhaps up, but uh, most people we pitch for sixty-five knots. Why is it sixty-five? Or seventy-two. That's kind of the best of the most. Of the most drag is re reduced at that angle and that speed. Least amount of drag, also known as LOV mass. One of the goals in slow flight is to be flying lower than L LOV max, called below the power curve. Because the slower we go, the more drag the airplane experiences via induced drag. So, in a pretending in a flaps 10 situation, which there is no published arc on there. If you're full flaps, you want to be a little, a little bit above in a while. I don't the white arc. So why don't we just reapply the flaps, get those back in there. Yep. That way we have some consistency. So we're there, okay. Alright, so we gained a lot out of the video. 3026, thank you, I got 945. Why, why did we gain a lot of altitude? Two reasons. Because I had flaps out, and I had that power on, so right, I was. So we had improper point. power setting. Really, the big one. What's the other one? What's the human factor? Oh, I was just pulling back a lot. You know, I'm 645, bro, with the park. I wouldn't call that the human factor. factor. I would call it the human factor element here. You're distracted. I started to ask you a lot of questions that started causing you to, to start thinking a lot more. Therefore, what happened? You, that you were thinking more than find the airplane. That aviate, navigate, communicate. 
me asking you questions is to communicate. There's a lot of times I had instructors asking me questions, and I would just like ignore them because I flew the plane first. Made sure I was going where I wanted to go, so at the right altitude. And then I, then once I was stabilized, then I started thinking about the problem, and then I gave them the answer. Everyone wants to get the answers really quick, but at expense of flying the airplane. So we need to make sure we're not distracted flying. Like a, like a teenager on their phone, texting. T-boning a car. Alright, so knowing what the low refresher, we use our power to control our altitude. altitude. But when we add that power, we're going to have to readjust the pitch to keep, the the picture, the keep our speed. So we yeah. add power, the plane's going to try to speed up too. So we'll pitch up a little bit, maintain that speed, and that'll also help us climb more. Visual 130, contact tower, 123 every day, 306. Doing a lot of overshooting with control, so smooth it out. See how much you really need to move. You're over-correcting. That's why you're seeing a lot of this. Because you're putting too big a movement. And it legs, it's really slow. So, reduce the amount of movements. Kind of pulse it in, take it, put it in, take it out. Put it in, take it out. You're kind of going here, so you start overshooting and then you're going here. So you're doing pilot induced oscillation. So, all our movements. Doing good on maintaining your altitude. But I'm noticing you're really staring at those instruments instead of looking outside. But you'll look out here, and that's probably why you're having all these pitch things. These attitude indicators, for that fine, nice, smooth wings level during slow flight, they're they're pretty much worth crap. Doesn't matter how nice they are, because they're they're never going to be as good as looking outside. If you need to, kind of pop up a little bit in your seat. You, uh, your seat adjustment wasn't right. You're doing a much better job maintaining that altitude. You're doing a good job with that speed. Alright, give me a turn to the west. Nice gentle turn, you may have to add a little bit of power. Do a gentle, nice turn back to the north. before they turn, they always kind of pop their wings, check to make sure those wings are clear. I'm thinking a few times you're just kind of turning it without looking. Yeah, turning without looking. You know, I'll be honest with you, you know, slow flight, like this very slow flight is a little disconcerting to me. Should be. We're close to stall speed. <laughs> I know it. That's kind of what makes me not nervous, but it's just like, yeah. That. All right. Much better. Much better. Feeling a little bit better with these? I'm sure that fundamental thing is that power controls your altitude, the pitch controls your airspeed, but when you do one, you're going to have to adjust the other. I've been watching a little bit more outside too, but is, a lot, is it a lot easier? It's a little, it's a leap of faith. It is. There's, there's 
say that my instruments aren't as good as my two eyeballs on the outside. Of course, that changes once you go IMC. It, your eyeballs become useless, and then your instruments are all you got. Or if you're doing night flying, your eyes are not operating at. They basically become your flight instruments, but not as they're not as reliable when you start reducing visibility via darkness or uh, moisture or something. So. It's, a, it's an interesting balance that you have to strike between the two. On crude aid like this, it's all eyeballs. Weather starts getting bad, reduce visibility, it's all instruments. But it's never completely one that, in uh, complete absence without the other. Except for that horse, that attitude in the care is pretty useless. In most cases, straight level, I, I almost never look at my attitude indicator. Establishing banks and turns and climbs and pitch, it becomes the, the, it's my primary instrument if it's uh, needed. All right, let's recover. Yeah. What's the nose gonna? You're gonna have to do with the nose if you add that power. You're gonna have to push it down, push it down. Maybe adjust your trim. Get that trim. Yep. And then take the first notch of flaps out. So at least get the flaps 20 in this airplane. That's going to speed it up. As you speed up, verify rate of climb. Yeah. Okay. In this case, we don't need positive rate of climb when we're high enough. But once you get about about 65, you can start taking all the flaps out. That's going to cause the nose to drop, though. So make sure you you readjust uh, in your altitude, but not climb. We want to make it. Thank you for watching our video. I really hope you learned something and be sure to watch any of our new videos as they come out. Hopefully you'll learn something and I hope everyone out there has a great day.